So this is the AGBT workshop presentation from the AGBT uh, in February 2012 uh, and is our update on the latest improvements to MySeq and introducing the HiSeq 2500. So this slide is really an update on the MySeq. Many of you will um, have a MySeq or be very familiar with it. So I just wanted a quick update on the instrument uh, since launch in September 2011. So we've placed over a third of our instruments in uh, clinical or translational labs, and uh, many of the applications that they're used for uh, are listed here, such as amplicon sequencing or QCing large-scale runs, uh, sequencing bacterial genomes, infectious disease, and in uh, a particularly interesting application, uh, counting affected alleles uh, in fetal blood. So this is the performance of the MySeq as it is today. So you can achieve uh, one and a half to two gigabases of uh, yield uh, from a read length of paired 150 uh, base reads um, using 5 million clusters passing filters. And this takes just over a day. And the performance update that we are introducing in 2012 will allow a MySeq to generate seven gigabases of data from paired 250 base reads uh, the number of reads is, has gone up to 15 million, and the runtime for that same paired 150 base read uh, is now just a little under 24 hours, uh, with the same quality as uh, you saw with the uh, original MySeq. And the way that we've done this is by improving uh, the chemistry through improving the uh, sequencing polymerase, uh, allowing much faster kinetics. So our chemistry cycle time has come down from three and a half minutes to now approximately two. And we've also got some novel reagent formulations as well for the uh, MySeq platform, allowing us to run uh, much faster. Uh, and also increasing the imaging area and uh, accessing the second surface on the flow sub. So this shows some data from one of our paired 250 base uh, runs. So the yield in this case was uh, eight gigabases of data from 16 million clusters passing filters. Uh, a large number of those were perfect, as shown here, and the error rates uh, are uh, really very nice, uh, certainly for paired hundreds, uh, below 0.2% on both read 1 and read 2, and also very nice error rates for uh, out to 250 cycles on both read 1 and read 2. And as you can see in the bottom panel here, uh, a very high fraction of high-quality bases. So in the overall run, 83% uh, of those bases were greater than or equal to Q30, with 4.7 gigabases of perfect reads. We've also been extending read length uh, out further than 250, and on this slide shows uh, our latest update to push read length out to uh, paired 400 base reads. So the yield in this experiment was uh, 3.4 gigabases of data, uh, from 3.8 million uh, clusters. This wasn't a full-scale run in this case, just a subset of the tiles on the instrument. One of the things that we found is that we were seeing a very high data quality again. So on read one, uh, over 80% of the data was greater than or equal to Q30 with the uh, single 400 base read. And over both reads, over 70% of the data greater than Q30. So uh, we still uh, have work to do on this protocol, and we're looking to uh, further improve the error rates on both read one and read two before delivering this as a product, which is what uh, we would like to do as soon as possible. But just to show you the late, latest update, the longest perfect read that we've achieved so far is 678 bases. This was achieved with a 500 base human library, and we stitched together a read one and read two looking for perfect overlaps and uh, found the longest read in this particular library of uh, 678 bases. So this wasn't an optimal library for this particular demonstration when we're looking to extend the read length further. I'm very confident that we'll be able to do that. Okay, that was just a very quick update on the uh, MySeq platform. And now just uh, switching gears to introduce uh, the new HiSeq 2500. So this is uh, a new instrument concept where a single instrument can be run in two different configurations. You can either run uh, your high seat just as you can today and generate 600 gigabases of data in 11 days um, using exactly the same reagents as you use now, or run it in fast turnaround mode to generate basically a genome's worth of data within just about 24 hours. So 
120 gigabases of data uh, from a new two-lane flow cell requires new reagents. But one of the things that we have been able to do is integrate the cluster generation on the instrument itself. So for this particular fast turnaround mode, there is no need to use a, a CBOT instrument to make the clusters. You can switch between these two configurations at the uh, click of a mouse, so either running five human genomes in 11 days, or if you wish to run a human genome in a single day, that requires nothing more than putting on a different flow cell and then just selecting a box in software. So the way we've done this is by combining innovation from both the MySeq platform and the HiSeq 2000. So from the MySeq, we have uh, integrated onboard clustering, uh, fast chemistry and uh, longer reads. And from the HiSeq 2000, obviously the major innovation there was the much faster scanning rate that we're able to achieve. So these two things have been put together to allow us, as I say, to achieve 120 gigabases of data in 27 hours with a complete walk away uh, workflow. This shows the high data quality that we've achieved in some of the uh, runs on our instruments here. Shown on the x-axis is the number of gigabases per lane of, of an individual HiSeq 2500 flow cell. And on the y-axis is the percentage of those bases that are greater than Q30. As is fairly obvious from this slide with paired 100 base reads uh, in both read one and read two, we're achieving a very high level of data quality and a very consistent output of data per lane. And we also see something similar when we go to PED 150 bases, though we've done fewer runs in that case. Having sped up the sequencing time to now just over a day with uh, the HiSeq 2500, we were interested in uh, exploring how we could uh, shorten other parts of the process uh, to achieve a much faster workflow to go all the way from sample prep through to a completed genome through analysis. So what we've been doing here in research is uh, using a 500 nanograms of human DNA and adapting our TrueSeq kits so that they are working in PCR-free mode. And we're able to achieve uh, libraries within three hours of starting the experiment. And then with an extra hour for QC of those libraries, we're then able to begin the sequencing itself. And I should just say that these TrueSeq PCR-free preps, not only are PCR-free, we also avoid gels in this process as well. So after the sequencing is completed, we then do a further very standard analysis using cassava uh, to generate annotated variants. So the total elapsed time to go from sample through to a completed uh, analyzed genome is just over two days. And this shows the performance that we've achieved over a variety of different customer runs, which I'll show you on the next couple of slides. So in blue here is the yield per uh, experiment uh, across those different samples. We're, we're getting uh, approximately 120 gigabases of data per sample. In, with the uh, purple diamonds, we're seeing the percentage of high quality bases. And as you can see, this uh, rarely dips below 90%. So we're seeing very high data quality. And in, with the yellow triangles, we've depicted the runtime, which for the first few runs started at 31 hours and has now gone to the standard spec of 27 hours, which is what we would expect for a paired 100 base run. So just to go through um, the couple of weeks up to AGBT, I've depicted how we've been using this fast workflow with a variety of different samples using a calendar. Uh, and in the blue bar here is the timeline of the experiment, where the beginning of the line is when sequencing started. The green bar shows when sequencing was completed and analysis completed with the yellow bar. And then at the end of the blue line is when we ship the data. So our first uh, set of experiments was with a set of tumor normal samples from Wash U. Uh, we started those on a Monday. Sequencing was finished on the Wednesday. The analysis was finished on the Thursday and we shipped the data back to WashU on Friday. So we were able to achieve a turnaround within a week. We then followed that up with another pair of tumor normal, this time from British Columbia, the second of which started on a Sunday and finished with the data being shipped to the collaborator on the Tuesday following the Sunday. We then uh, did that same two-day turnaround with a sample from Broad. And also, on the Thursday of that week, kicked off a run sequencing 
uh, some FFP samples that, that Broad had sent us, achieving 130 gigabases of data, uh, of which a very high percentage was uh, very good quality as shown there. We then sequenced uh, a variety of uh, other customer samples, the, the first of which from Children's Mercy Hospital, and another pair of samples from WashU, and also some samples from Sanger. And just to finish the picture, uh, we also sequenced further 20 exomes in a single run, yielding 7.6 gigabases of data per exome, and a uh, Yoruban trio. So in all, we sequenced 16 samples totaling two terabases of data, of which nearly 92% of that was very high quality, at greater than or equal to Q30. And some of these, three of them in this case, the samples were prepped the same day as the sequencing. So those are shown in here with the little star, and typically the others were done the day before. And I'm just uh, going to highlight the uh, Broad sample here, which was a uh, basically a 48-hour, two-day turnaround uh, from sample through to shipping off the data. And this really just shows some of that uh, data. So we generated a very high quality library that was uh, very diverse, contained 18 billion unique fragments. Um, I should say again that this was a PCR-free, gel-free library. We then went on and sequenced that with a standard 27-hour sequencing run and generated 127 gigabases of data, which is shown in the table in the middle. And then the SNP concordance uh, and coverage is shown on the far side there, which is uh, exactly what you'd expect uh, with this particular sample. We uh, then looked at the data across different uh, segments of the genome, looking, uh, for example, in uh, areas of the genome which have a high GC content or within exons. And shown in black here is the uh, normalized coverage of each of those features for the fast turnaround PCR free prep. And shown with the other colors are some similar preps. This time, they, they've been prepped using the same workflow, but they've been sequenced on the HiSeq 2000. And as you can see, there's a very good consistency for these preps and the sequencing quality across all of these different samples. To extend this further, we, we wanted to reduce the DNA inputs to below 500 nanograms. And so we've been experimenting in R&D with preps that start with only 100 nanograms of input material. And in this case, we start with a microgram of DNA, which we quantified using qubit. We dilute it at 1 to 10, and then we make a library from that entire sample. And uh, without the need to do any quantification, we then load all of that library onto the HiSeq 2500 for the sequencing run. We found that this works quite well in the, the few samples that we've looked at to generating uh, good quality libraries from this very small amount of material. And I'll show you the data on that. So with a very standard workflow, uh, as you can see here, we generate the data uh, in just about two days. And this shows the data from the sample preparation. So we, we took a Yoruban trio here. We prepped all of those samples, starting with 100 nanograms of input DNA through our PCR-free, uh, gel-free prep. The gap size distribution there is shown at the top right. And then the diversity of those libraries is shown in the table. And the analysis of this data shows that in all three of these samples, we're generating between 140 and 180 gigabases of data with very high data quality, typically around about 83, 93% uh, in this case. And we're seeing very good coverage and concordance across uh, genotypes, as you would expect. Just finally, this, just to compare what those very low input uh, DNA preps look like with our PCR-free method to a standard prep using uh, one microgram of DNA uh, using PCR, you can see that we get across a whole variety of different genomic features, equivalent or, or better coverage of those features using the low input prep and our HiSeq 2500. So just to summarize uh, the talk, really there are two main themes that I wanted to bring out. Firstly, the extensibility and uh, flexibility of the MySeq. Uh, we can increase the yield from the one and a half to two gigabases now to seven gigabases of data. All of that is high quality and generate read lengths out to PED 250. And these, the faster chemistry that we've developed uh, allows, those shorter, uh, allows shorter protocols as well, should you wish.
We also have applied the same um, extensibility and flexibility to the HiSeq platform in introducing the HiSeq 2500 by increasing read lengths to paired 150 bases, uh, having two uh, different modes for running the HiSeq in either fast turnaround mode to generate a genome in a day, uh, or fast exomes, or fast transcriptomes, or to do what you can currently do with your HiSeq, which is generate a very high yielding run of 600 gigabases in just about 11 days. Uh, both instruments are uh, easy to use and generate uh, high data quality. And the thing that's been driving us and something that we're very committed to is the rapid turnaround uh, from sample to answer with high quality whole genomes and developing sort of whole systems that enable us to do that.